We did receive hundreds of questions and we will get to just as many as we possibly can. Great to see you today. Let's get right to those questions. Chris asking, I got a denial in April because they say I did not make $1,400 in the last two fiscal quarters. I made well over that amount and had my employer appeal the denial with documents proving my income. I still haven't heard anything and I continue filing my claim every week. Our family cannot continue to survive my law with my lost income. What do you have to say to Chris tonight? Well, with Chris, we're going to make sure we were able to take care of him and um, going to be able to get that information offline, Gene. Um, with, with Granite Staters that have filed, the good news is that we're paying at about a 94% rate uh, with those people that are actively filing. And then the good news for the 6% uh, that we haven't uh, gotten to in, into payable status yet is that we are still uh, being very aggressive with how we're approaching this. Uh, we're working seven days a week, working into the evenings. Um, so staff are very much um, still working hard. No one over here is relaxing. Uh, we're, we're trying to get all of the folks that are eligible, trying to get them paid as quickly as possible. But it's important to remember that not all people that file are eligible for benefits. And we do need to be cautious uh, with a lot of the fraud that we've been hearing about across the country. I know Massachusetts, Maine, uh, they've had some recent uh, dealings with fraud where they've had to shut down benefit payments. Um, in New Hampshire, uh, we've been careful with this. We try to catch it before it gets into the, into the system, but we need to be very cautious and do the appropriate due diligence to review all claims and try to get to them as quickly as we can. All right, Becky has a question saying, my daughter filed back on April 4th and was denied for not making the $1,400 minimum, but in the appeal said it would be turned over to the pandemic unemployment assistance because her workplace is closed due to COVID-19. Online, it still says she's not eligible, but shouldn't she qualify due to the CARES Act? Right, so with, with the uh, appeal decision uh, notifying uh, that individual that they were eligible, that is correct. So uh, the unemployment system has historically been based on the fact that individuals were working and they were earning a, an adequate amount of uh, wages in that employment. And the CARES Act did dramatically change that. Uh, so now uh, we are able to process those claims. We're able to pay those out, even for those individuals that don't have the minimum amount of earnings that they would have required to have had just two short months ago. Uh, so uh, that's, a, that's good news that uh, that individual to receive the, the notice indicating that they would getting, uh, be uh, starting to get paid soon. Wendy has a question asking, I've been waiting for nine weeks so far and still haven't received a penny in unemployment. Today, I was told they're still waiting for the CARES Act to kick in. So when will that be? Nine weeks is too long to go without a paycheck. And I, I would agree with Wendy, nine weeks is too long. Um, and that's why... Uh, we continue uh, to uh, not relax here at the department, continuing to work seven days a week um, to process all of the claims. And, and let's, um, let's be clear, not all uh, uh, claims are simple to process and make sure they're being paid at the appropriate amount. Um, we have, uh, we've been experiencing delays uh, in a lot of situations that aren't New Hampshire's fault, um, where we have individuals with wages from multiple states um, and we need to be in touch with those other states to make sure that individuals aren't filing against multiple states. So that's a, a common source of unemployment fraud in the country. Um, so we need to make sure we comply with federal requirements. And some of those states have been slow in getting us their wage information. Uh, we've been trying to collaborate with those states, trying to identify what their problems are to get the, the wage information delivered to New Hampshire faster so that we can get more individuals paid. Uh, but within a lot of those situations that get a little bit more complicated, um, New Hampshire is doing it all that it can within the federal requirements to get these folks paid. All right, Richard Lavers, stay with us. We have more important questions coming in and we will get to them right after a quick break.